بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزنا إلما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جاءته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته إن شاء الله تبارك وتعالى we welcome you to our beginning of the reading of the Muqtasar or the summary of Ihya Ulum al-Din of the revival of the religious sciences written by the great scholar Abu Hamid Muhammad ibn Muhammad al-Ghazali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and insha'Allah in these sessions we're going to be concentrating on the Arabic text however you have your English text that you could follow as I'm going to just make some brief comments uh, uh, from the Arabic text. And we're going to start on page 23. And inshallah, we'll cover whatever Allah wa ta'ala wills for us to cover. Today, alhamdulillah, it's an honor of mine to have, to share with you a treat that I've been enjoying for years now, our Sheikh, who was our student, mashallah, may Allah reward him, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al-Azhari. Uh, and, and it is an honor to say that. I remember this young man came to me as a little boy, and now he's an adult working, in on, working on his master's degree in Al-Azhar University in Egypt. May Allah give him success. He is the brother of Sheikh Abdul Rahman, who you read with yesterday, and who reads al adqar He's the younger brother of him. So alhamdulillah, their parents entrusted them to me. And alhamdulillah, it became uh, a pleasure. You know, it shows when you work, you get results. And alhamdulillah, I appreciate it. So inshallah, we'll begin. Uh, as I said, I'm going to make some brief comments in English. I'm not going to, you have the translation so you can read. I'm just going to highlight some points, inshallah. And in the future, we're going to go over the whole book in English as well. But there are some things I need to fix in the translation and I didn't have time. And I wanna get as much of the barakah of reading to know the format of Al-Ihya as possible, inshallah. Naam, nabda'u, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Al-Fatiha ala ruwa Sayyid al-Nam al-Ghazali, al-Fatiha. Naam. قال الشيخ الإمام حجة الإسلام أبو حامد محمد بن محمد الغزالي رحمه الله تعالى ورضي عنه آمين الحمد لله على جميع نعمائه حتى على توفيقه لحمده وصلواته على سيد المرسلين محمد النبيه ورسوله وعبده وعلى آله وأصحابه وخلفائه من بعده ووزرائه في عهده I want you to pay attention how Imam al-Ghazali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu started this opening. He prays after starting with the name of Allah and seeking the help of Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa bihi nasta'in, uh, starting with the name of Allah, indicating Allah's excellent attribute of mercy and seeking assistance through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned that 
the praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of his endowments, all of the bounties, and we should constantly think about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he mentioned something that is extremely important. When you look at, he mentioned general, all the favors of Allah. Then he went specific, and it's something we should highlight. He said, even of the tawfiq of Allah in praising him, right? Hatta ala tawfiqihi lihamdihi. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to praise him, to give gratitude. And thanks, then this in itself is a great endowment. Because there is no way for you to thank and praise Allah except by Allah creating in you the ability to do that. And then the author, he went into making salah and salam on Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioning some of his noble characteristics that he is the master of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi. He is a prophet. He is a messenger. He is a slave of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and all of those are noble characteristics of the prophet. Naam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go ahead. قال أما بعد فإنه قد عن لي في بعض أسفاري أن أستخرج من كتاب إحياء علوم الدين لبابة لتعذر استصحابه مع كبر حجمه فأقدمت على ذلك مستوفقا من الله تعالى ومستخيرا له ومصليا على نبيه ومسلما وهو يشتمل على أربعين بابا والله الموفق للصواب so Imam Al-Ghazali here he mentions why, what, what he was idea was, <coughs> right, in summarizing this. And sometimes some of the scholars, they mentioned that this summary was not actually done by Imam Ghazali. It is mentioned that it was done by his brother Ahmed. Allah knows best as to the reality. But what is contained in this is, in this summary, was to get the essence of Al-Ihya, to get the essence of the Ihya out of it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So Al-Ihya is big. So it is summarized in order that we get the main points, right? That we get the core of what is intended by Sayyiduna Al-Imam Al-Ghazali. And inshallah, as we continue with our studies, we are going to constantly read in this book, read in different versions, read in different summaries, so that the meanings of the Ihya is uh, a part of us, right? As some of the scholars said, whoever doesn't read in the Ihya, he is not among the Ahya. The one who doesn't read in the Ihya of Imam al-Ghazali, then this person is really not among the living, right? In other words, he may be physically existing, but the spirit and the reality of the human being is missing, right? And he mentioned that this Ihya is having four sections, right? I mean, 40 sections, so 40 chapters we can say, right? So it is divided into quarters, Al Ihya, and we know it from our code 3453, how the Ihya is divided into quarters. The first quarter, is Rubr Ibadat. It is the quarter of Ibadat or acts of worship. And that has 10 chapters. The second is Rubul Adat, the section of customary practices, right? Or the quarter of customary practices, which has 10 chapters. And Rubul Muhlikat, the quarter of ruinous characteristics, which has 10 chapters. And the final one, Rubul Munjiyat which is the quarter of saving characteristics. So that add up to 40 sections. And he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who grants tawfiq to do what is correct. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll read uh, uh, the first quarter, which is ibadat, and the, the chapters it consists of now. الربع الأول العبادات يتضمن الأبواب التالية أولا العلم والتعلم 
ثانيا الاعتقاد ثالثا أسرار الطهارة رابعا أسرار الصلاة ومهماتها خامسا أسرار الزكاة سادسا أسرار الصيام سابعا أسرار الحج ثامنا تلاوة القرآن تاسعا الأذكار والدعوات عاشرا الأوراد So this first quarter is the quarter of Al-Ibadat and we talked about Al-Ibadat if we looked at the Ihya it is talking about relationships right because this is mu'amala right this is uh al mu'amala the knowledge of one's relationships and transactions and dealings and al ibadat is that section which is the relationship between the servant and his lord so if we want to look at this first quarter it's going to talk about that relationship that the servant has has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Imam al-Ghazali mentions in that quarter of al-ibadat, acts of worship or devotions, the 10 chapters. The first one is knowledge and learning, right? Knowledge and learning. The second is the creed, the issue of the belief, al-i'tiqad. The third, asrar al-tahara, the secrets of a tahara So it's not like a book of fiqh, which is going to teach you the rules of purification. Rather, even though he mentions the rules, he's also going to mention you the spiritual secrets that are behind the rules, right? And the fourth uh, chapter, the secrets of the prayer and its important aspects, right? And the fifth is the secrets of a zakat that obligatory spending from one's wealth or the obligatory charity. The sixth is Asrar al-Siyam, the secrets of fasting. The seventh, Asrar al-Hajj, or the secrets of pilgrimage. The eighth, Tilawat al-Quran, uh, the recitation of the Quran. The ninth, is remembrances and supplications, al-adhkar wa da'awat. And the last one, 10th al-awrad, is litanies uh, or series of devotions that one does at established or specific times. Excuse me, excuse me. Okay, so we're on page, we're getting ready to begin on page number 25 of your English copy, which is Bab al Awl fi al Ilm wa Ta'alum. Naam. Kala al Bab al Awl fi al Ilm wa Ta'alum. I'alam anna fadila fi al Ilm shawahiduha min al Quran kathira. Faminha kawluhu ta'ala yarfa illahu al Ladina amanu minkum wal Ladina utu al Ilm darajat. قال ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه للعلماء درجات فوق المؤمنين بسبعمائة درجة ما بين الدرجتين مسيرة خمسمائة عام وقال الله تعالى قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون وقال الله تعالى إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء وقال الله تعالى وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس here, I want you to pay attention of the format of the Ihya, the way Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, explains every uh, chapter and the topic of that chapter and the format he does it. You will notice that the first thing he talked about in the section of knowledge and learning, and really we could say al ilm wa ta'alim wa ta'allum, or all of them, learning, uh, knowledge, learning, and teaching, right? He starts off talking about fadila to ilm the virtue of knowledge. And then he gives its evidences 
from the Quran first. So he's going to start with the Quran, and then he mentioned in the Quran several verses. In fact, four of them. And this is a summary, so it should be easy for us to memorize these verses or to put them in our mind, even the translation, so that when we talk about the importance or the virtue of knowledge, where do we get it from? From the Quran, it's revelation. So he mentions the first verse that Allah wa ta'ala raises the ranks of those who believe and have been given knowledge. In Surah Mujadila, verse number 11. And then he talks about the statement of Sayyidullah Imam Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because Ibn Abbas, he was known as the interpreter of the Quran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made dua for Ibn Abbas. He said, oh Allah, give him wisdom and the interpretation of the book. Give him wisdom and ta'wil al-kitab, the interpretation of the book. So he was known as the interpreter of the Quran. And he mentioned about these ranks that the people of knowledge is given. And he said to those ulama or those people of knowledge, they have ranks that are above the regular believers, which are 700 levels, 700 degrees. And between each degree is the distance of 500 years, mashallah. And I like to keep in this term when we say ulama, I like to remind you of the saying of Imam al-Haddad <coughs> radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that who was the one who summarized the works of Imam al-Ghazali in his books, among them the Book of Assistance and others, right? Which we covered already. Imam al-Haddad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, whoever knows one religious judgment, man alima mas'alatan wahidatan, Whoever knows one religious judgment, biha, then he is a scholar in that issue. So when we look at any amount of knowledge that we learn and we become proficient in that knowledge, then the reward that is mentioned for the scholars in that would be given to you. So you should always strive to master your knowledge, to understand it well. Why? Because who wouldn't want these high degrees and levels, right? And we think in 700 darajat, 700 levels, right? And between each level, 500 years, the distance of 500 years. And then he mentioned the verse <coughs> where Allah said, say, are those who know equal to those who do not know? No, meaning the people who know they have a higher rank. And the other verse, verily Allah, so, I mean, Verily, the truly only the ones, truly the only ones who really have khasha, have fear of Allah Tabaraka wa Taala, are al ulama, are the scholars, the learned people. They have the real reverence and fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then you have this verse: These are similitudes that we strike for people, so that really the people who comprehend and really understand them are al-ulama, are uh, al-alimun, those knowledgeable people. So this is the first format. He mentioned verses of the Quran. So even if you remember one or two or all four, it gives you some uh, knowledge from the Quran to show you the status of knowledge. Now, go ahead. ومن الأخبار قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم العلماء ورثة الأنبياء وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أفضل الناس المؤمن العالم الذي إن احتيج إليه نفع وإن استغني عنه أغنى نفسه وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم الإيمان عريان ولباسه التقوى وزينته الحياء وثمرته العلم وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أقرب الناس من درجة النبوة أهل العلم وأهل الجهاد أما أهل العلم فدل الناس على ما جاءت به الرسل وأما أهل الجهاد فجاهدوا بأسيافهم على ما جاءت به الرسل وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم العالم أمين الله في الأرض 
وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم يشفع يوم القيامة ثلاثة الأنبياء ثم العلماء ثم الشهداء So here then Imam Al-Ghazali goes into Al-Akhbar Al-Akhbar meaning the ahadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم those narrations from the Prophet so you will notice immediately that the Ihya is based on the Quran and the Sunnah right so sometimes they know that say, Imam al-Ghazali was a Sufi, right? Nam, the people of Tasuf, of people of Tasawwuf, they are the most eager in uh, Allah. They are the most eager in sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah, right? They are the most eager in sticking to the Sunnah. So you will find Imam al-Ghazali for all these points that he's going to make related to the virtues of knowledge and scholars and the people of knowledge. He's going to mention what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about that. As the great Imam Junaid al-Baghdadi, who was known as Ra'is al-Qawm, the head of the Sufis, right? All of those Turuq al-Sufiyya, those Sufi paths, paths, they have their way back to Sayyiduna al-Imam al-Junaid. Imam al-Junaid, he said, this path of ours, right, tariquna hadha, this path of ours, meaning the path of Tasawwuf, he said, it is built or is restricted by the book in the Sunnah, right? It is restricted. The path of Tasawwuf, the path of Sufism, is bound by the Quran and the Sunnah, right? It is restricted by them. So anyone, even if he fly in the air, walk on water, have vast distance un uh, unfolded for him in instantaneously, if he contradicts the book in the Sunnah, then we pay no attention to him. So the idea that Sufis are not on Quran and Sunnah, automatically the first chapter in the Ihya, Imam al-Ghazali shows you that this path is built on the Quran and the Sunnah. So he mentions these hadith, and among the important ones that he mentions, and all of them are important, but that I want to highlight is the first one he mentioned, that the scholars, they are the inheritors of the prophets. That the scholars, they are the inheritors of the prophets. And what is it that the scholars inherit from the prophets? They inherit knowledge. They inherit knowledge. <coughs> Sayyiduna Imam Abu Huraira, I mean Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, <coughs> excuse me. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one time he came to the marketplace in Al Madina and he came to the people and he said to them, <coughs> Woe to you! You're out here buying and selling in the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being distributed in the masjid. So when they heard that, they left their shops and they left their goods and they went to the Prophet's mosque Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when they got there, they didn't see any material being distributed. So they turned around and as they were coming, Abu Huraira was walking towards the masjid. And they said, oh, Abu Huraira, you said that the, the, the prophets' inheritance was being distributed. And we went there, and there's no distributing of no inheritance. And he said to them, what did you find? He said, there's people are sitting around in circles, people praying. You know, they're doing acts of worship, and they're teaching knowledge. He said, that is the inheritance of the prophets, right? So this knowledge of the religion is the inheritance of the prophets. And the ones who inherited that are the ulama, are the scholars. And that's why, as we mentioned, that we need that unbroken chain to teach us, like back to Sayyidina al-Imam al-Ghazali. Why? Because this is, these are the bearers of the inheritance of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Imam al-Ghazali mentioned who are the best of people, the most superior, afdalun nas, 
the most superior people? He said, Al Mu'minul Alam, that knowledgeable believer, right? If people need him, he benefits them. And if he's free of anyone needing him, he is sufficient within himself. He enriches himself with his knowledge. MashaAllah. <coughs> and the scholar, <coughs> the scholar is Allah's trustworthy servant in the earth. And if we look at it on the day of judgment, three people are going to intercede the prophets, the scholars, and the martyrs. So just if we love the prophets and we love the scholars and we love the martyrs on the day of judgment, we may be recipients of their intercession. Naam, go ahead. He was among the Salaf. He died in the beginning of the third century, around 220, somewhere around there. Naam. وقال فتح الموصلي رحمه الله تعالى أليس المريض إذا منع الطعام والشراب والدواء يموت قالوا بلى excuse me in سيارة علامة بلى is mentioned I don't know if this is a mistake I gotta double check it said he's died 130 and he was from the companions no this cannot be right is it Mm, I think it should 220, so I got to check this because it says he was among the campaign or the contemporaries of Bishr al Hafi in Syria, Sakati. So it might be. Uh, we'll check. I, th I think this is a mistake in that, uh, uh, inshallah. I'll check, double check. Remind me of that. Because all of them, they were before Imam al Junaid. And Imam al Junaid, he died at the end of the third century because Syria Sakati was the teacher of Imam Junaid. Mm. I think that's a mistake in the book. We'll check. Go ahead. وقال فتح الموصلي أليس المريض إذا منع الطعام والشراب والدواء يموت قالوا بلى قال كذلك القلب إذا منع عنه الحكمة والعلم ثلاثة أيام يموت <coughs> يموت أو مات نعم مات <coughs> ولقد صدق إذ غذاء القلب العلم والحكمة وبهما حياته كما أن غذاء الجسم الطعام والشراب ومن فقد العلم فقلبه مريض وموته لازم وليس يشعر به لأن شواغل الدنيا أبطلت إحساسه فإذا كشف الموت عنه تلك الشواغل أحس بألم عظيم وتحسر تحسرا لا آخر له وهو معنى قوله عليه الصلاة والسلام الناس نيام فإذا ما تنتبهوا قال وأما فضيلة التعلم So here what is mentioned it's something we should take important. He said that if a sick person is deprived of food, drink, medicine, for instance, they're going to die, right? He said, likewise is the situation of the heart. SubhanAllah. Likewise is the situation of the heart. If it is prevented from wisdom and knowledge for three days, it will die, subhanAllah, right? Why? Because the nourishment of the bodies is food and drink, but the nourishment of the heart is knowledge and wisdom, and life is given to the heart through knowledge and wisdom, subhanAllah. So whoever doesn't get knowledge, his heart will become sick. And when his heart becomes sick, his death is imminent. He's going to die from that. And he won't notice it. Why? Because being occupied with the things of this world is going to veil his vision. He becomes veiled, right? And his senses can't realize what's really happening. But when he dies, all of the dunya is going to go away. 
and he's going to feel a great pain that was affecting his heart in this world. And he would have regret and he would feel sadness, right? And that's what it is mentioned with the Prophet Sallallahu said, the people are sleeping and when they die, they become awake, they become aware. Right now in this dunya, we out of here. We're not paying attention, right? And as some of the ulama, the knowers of Allah, they said, sometimes the people have become graves before they enter the grave, right? They are dead before they die. They are graves before they enter the grave. Meaning in this world, their heart has become dead. And if the heart is dead, then you, even though you're physically alive, you are really dead, right? And this is important. So the life of our heart, our knowledge, and understanding that knowledge and implementing that knowledge, we will benefit. And we should reach that point of certainty through our knowledge, like Sayyidina Imam Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he said, if the veil was removed, I would not increase in certainty, right? If the veil was removed, I would not increase in certainty. Insha'Allah, we'll stop here. So we'll stop here. Uh, I gotta need another part because we have to go for the next class. Allah, Allah, Allah. And we'll continue next Monday. So we reached up to Fadilatu Ta'allum, the virtue of learning. Allah, time flies. Uh, I, I was right. Masha Allah. You are getting a lot of gifts. We have people researching while we're talking. Masha Allah. Sheikh Abdurrahman, uh, he said that Fat uh, al Mosili. There are two of them. One is a sagir and one is kabir. One is the junior and one is the senior. Al kabir, the jun, the senior, he died. So his name is Fatan Mosili as well. He died in the year 170. Waqila 150, and it was said in the year 150. So this is not the one we're talking about. He said a sagir, the junior one, he died 220. When, as I mentioned. He was among the contemporaries of Bishr al-Hafi and Ibrahim ibn, ibn Adham. So mashallah, that one, Fatul Mosali, he died in the year 220. He is Fatul Mosali as sagir the younger one. Barakallahu fikum Sayyidi Shaykh Abdul Rahman. All right, Abdul Aziz, close us out quickly with dua, inshallah. Allah, you have to Please make dua. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz is working on his master's degree. That Allah gives him success. Let him finish. He will return, inshallah, after Ramadan sometime, and he will be with us regularly, inshallah. Uh, after a long many years, he's been to Yemen and to Egypt and went to Sham and uh, Lebanon and visiting different places and seeking knowledge, mashallah. So he comes back to us. He's here and now online, but inshallah, at the end of next, in the middle of next year, he'll be physically back with us, inshallah. So make dua that Allah gives him tawfiq and his studies and let him continue. We are very happy with him. And mashallah, it is a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to have them in our midst. And they went from little boys and running around the masjid. <laughs> there was not little, little boys, but young kids, and now they are adults and teachers and learned people. Alhamdulillah, we are so happy. MashaAllah. Close us out with dua quickly. InshaAllah. Barakallahu bikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa afdulu salati wa atamu taslimi ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alihim wa tub alayna ya mawlana innaka anta tawwab al-rahim. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم يا من وفق أهل الخير للخير وأعانهم عليه وفقنا للخير وأعنا عليه 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين فاتحة فاتحة بسم الله بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خيرا